The Ensemble podcast is intended for professional financial advisors. All discussion is limited to publicly available information and should not be interpreted as legal, professional or financial advice. Ensemble does not hold an AFS license nor provide any financial services. Before making investment decisions, you should obtain financial advice from a qualified financial advisor. Hello, my name's James Wrigley. I'm a financial advisor and one of the principals of Melbourne-based financial planning firm, First Financial. I've been a long-term listener and contributor to the Ensemble Group and podcast, picking up some amazing nuggets of gold over the years. And through this podcast and the people that I'm able to speak to and interview, hopefully I can continue to deliver some of those nuggets of gold to you. IntelliFlow is on a mission to give more people access to financial advice. Their technology, IntelliFlow Office, powers and streamlines the advisory experience for over 30,000 financial advisors worldwide, making an impact at every stage of the advice process, including practice management, revenue management, cash flow modelling, client portals and more. IntelliFlow Office helps advisors manage all their client and provider data within a single integrated ecosystem that just works. Discover IntelliFlow for yourself by visiting IntelliFlow.com. Hello and welcome back to another episode of the podcast. I'm James Wrigley and I've got the pleasure of speaking with Steve Sloan today. Steve from Link Wealth Group or owner of Link Wealth Group. Steve, you were kind enough uh, the other week to put a post out on LinkedIn saying, how oh, is anyone very free for a chat? You know, kind of then in that morning you reached out saying you're happy to uh, have a chat at some point. And so we're, we're, uh, here we are. So Steve, thanks for joining me. Yeah, thanks, James. Great to be here. I know uh, I've seen your face pop up a couple of times. So it would be great, a great opportunity to meet and have a chat. Yeah, yeah, and uh, recorded and, and value for everyone. So, so Link Link Wealth Group, as as I said before, we before I started before I press record on on this, you know, by and large, a lot of the people that I get the opportunity to speak to as part of this podcast, they're kind of solo operators in a sense. You know, it might be one advisor, two advisors, power planner, maybe a client service manager, or some. Some operational type support, but a lot of the ensemble community is is you know relatively small financial planning businesses. You, from just judging by your website, and I'm keen to hear, hear your story. You seem to have grown past that. You know, just one one advisor. But can you tell like what is link what does link look like at the moment now? And yep. then maybe we'll go back to how do you kind of got to where you are at the moment? Yeah, for sure. Uh, so link today. Um, We've based out of Melbourne, so head office is in Melbourne. Uh, we've got an office in Adelaide. I'm in Adelaide today. Uh, and then sort of small little satellite office in Brisbane, City that we use from Melbourne to go up and down and, and service clients. Yeah, nice. We've, we've got five ARs as we speak. We've always sort of floated around the five to six ARs, but a bit short of the minute, just uh, staffing in general, I think, is in the industry. Yeah. Um, and trying to find a, another AR, but a, a little bit time, but it's a bit of time at the minute. And then we've got a team of about uh, six, what we call associates or FPAs. So whether they're starting a PY program or just about to start where it may be, so about six of those. So there's about 11 or 12 in the advice team, I call it, yep. uh, which gives the engine room. Yep. And then we've got the operations in, in Melbourne, so the ops managers, the um, about five or six ops in Melbourne. Um, but then the business is sort of multifaceted because all we did about five years ago is create an offshore business that that is called Levera. And I've got about 30 odd staff over there in the Philippines that You're really right. support the engine room of Link Wealth Group. Okay. Uh, and then we've got a finance business as well called Link Wealth Finance, which is the mortgage working side of the business. So, yeah, right. all that was probably 50, 52 staff across across the whole group that really support the business. And um, yeah, and it started 2012 and it was just me <laughs> in a room. Yeah. Still- so, look, as, as I said, you know, there's, there's not that many that build financial planning businesses up to. Fifty staff, wherever they might be sitting, and whatever they they might be doing. So, so that the, the business that's in the Philippines is that is that just kind of uh, resourcing for your own business? Do you do you have you know, virtual resources or whatever you want to call it for for other businesses as well? Yeah, what, so it originally was started to support Link Wealth Group uh, originally, um, but then about three years ago we decided to outsource it to other financial plan practices. So we also look after about another fourteen businesses around Australia. Yep. And supply some sort of administration staff for them as well. So uh, they do the, sort of the end to end administration, if you like, the applications and all that sort of jazz. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so it started to go to other businesses as well, which is been- Yeah, nice. So that, that, those 30 people that are offshore are supporting you and, and the others. That's all in the one one business, I guess. Yeah. yeah, correct. So I've got about 11 of them that support my, um, my, my group at Link, and then the rest of them are sort of outsourced to, to others um, around the country. 
Um, and we just want to see like a bit of a, a center of excellence. You know, they all sit in the same room together and talk about advice and how to do it, implement it better and things like that. Um, and, and yeah, it's been really, really good for that. Yeah, fantastic. And, yeah. and so in, in the Australian team, it, it's really just the advisors and that associate advisor, you know, whatever you, you know, particular title you might call it, people going through the professional year. So you don't have um, like a client services team as such here. We do. So I've always, oh, well. yeah, even with the outsourcing arrangement, I've always made sure that if something happened and it got cut off and say there was an earthquake or yeah. we know what happens over there, that we can still operate. Perfect. So I've got two client service officers in Melbourne. Uh, we're about to bring on a third and, and a full-time receptionist uh, and, and a, 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 a operations manager. And we're just recruiting HR and PNC now. So that's, uh, so yeah, we just make sure we all can always build it out so we, we can operate if we need to. Yeah, yeah, right. And and so how did take us through the story of starting from just you to ending up at 50-odd now? Like, what yeah. were, Where did you – were you in financial advice before you started on your own? What was the story there? I was part owner of another company called Oak yep. Financial Partners uh, okay. with another fellow based out of Melbourne. And then in 2012, we amicably just decided to go our separate ways. Yep. Um, and so I, I, I pulled out some clients out of that business. I, had a, I was looking after about 30 – 30 families that came over with me uh, to start. And um, so, yeah, just started with myself and a small desk in one of those share offices in, in Melbourne um, back in 2012. And then, look, it, there was a lot of ups and downs and sideways movements and a lot of mistakes across the journey. And as we all know, with business, but I think we, we just always had the philosophy to try and find the right people to come on board. And so I had that from the get go. And, and, and we know how important that is. Um, and, and just always try to go forward, you know, whatever was happening, whether it was be royal commissions or whatever issues we were facing at the time, just just keep on going forward and pressing forward, and yeah, and that's the way it sort of grew from there. And and your role at the moment, see, so you, you're still seeing clients. You're not just kind of heading up the the business. So you're, you're still financial advisor as well. I am. Uh, yeah. Look, I, I love it. Look, I I, I don't want to give that away. Um, I, I really enjoy seeing clients. But what we our model at Link is we've got a pod system, so I'll be an advisor. I've got two sort of associates that sit with me, and say with Josh and Billy and the like. And then what we do is over time we feed the up and comers the clients. So this year I went from 120 clients down. I'm going to go to about 50 um, clients, and, and all of those clients have gone on to other advisors or. One of our associates came through to AR and he's taken about 50 of my clients. So we've got that model where I'll then build it up again. And then as the new lot come through of PY into AR, we'll then feed on to to those guys. And, and we find the clients have no problem with that. Like they've dealt with the, the guys for two years or three years, even if they're just associates or you know, junior advisors, whatever you want to call them. They don't send away about that because they know I'm always here. Um, and are happy to, to be sort of like serviced by another advisor. And yeah, I'm interested just- in, in how you manage that process. Like we, we have a fairly similar process here and it's interesting to hear how others are, are managing that. So you build it up, you transition some clients onto you know, someone else that's coming through. Yeah, how, how do you manage that with, with the client? Like what's the conversation around that with the client? How does it work? Yeah, so look at the before we've managed to like move them on, um, they've been working with that person for a long time anyway. So I've got Braden Duckworth, one of my new ARs, and he went through the PY program at Link and Advisor Academy at Link. And then, but that, that because I've been working with him for two years, and all the clients know him day to day anyway, and been talking to him, it was such an easy conversation to the point where we didn't really have to say much. To be honest, it was it was like you know Braden's here, and I just said, look, you know, the business is changing. Uh, the, the the model's changing, so we're just going to be reallocating. But I'm always here, and that, to be honest with you, there's just no no negative feedback whatsoever. Was, I, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing because they yeah. didn't worry too much that I wasn't looking after them. And that and that's broadly been our experience here too, where particularly where the clients going to an associate advisor that they've been working with for a while. Like there's Ben now, our managing director, when he was handing over his last clients, they went to one of the advisors, Steph, and the conversation went something along the lines of you know. Like Steph does all the work anyway, and the clients will turn around and say, "We know that Ben. It's fine. Like just move on." Because <laughs> you know you that you know you just show up, but Steph actually does all the work. If you want yeah. something done, we call Steph. So uh, yeah, it does work quite smoothly. We've found it a little bit more challenging if, and rightly so, if the client doesn't know that advisor. So if I was handing over clients to a different advisor in the business, but that may well have been here for years, 
but their clients had no no touch point with them up until now. That's still still goes okay, but can be a little little tougher. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. no, for tougher. But yeah, all in all, works works been working pretty well. And that obviously frees up my time, and and Josh has done the same. Uh, Billy's doing the same, and so really frees up the probably set, if you want to call them senior advisors to get out there and talk to more people and see more people and work on the business a bit more. And um, yeah, that multifaceted. They're going from just yourself to hiring your first person at all bit you know, 10, 11 odd years ago. Is there any kind of learnings from, from that? You, you see a lot of stuff online about people saying kind of hire before you really need it and then other people are somewhat drowning in work and then all of a sudden they try to hire someone. Do you have any learnings in that that you can share? Yeah, look, all that, uh, it's just so challenging to make that call. It's yeah. like, we're, and you've got to sort of predict the future to sort of work out when to go. And I have made the mistake of going too early, definitely. Yeah. I made that and I, it, cash flow was cooked and all. Uh, and so I just had to get it right while they got it wrong. Uh, so, you know, I, I did. Uh, so sometimes I got it wrong, sometimes I got it right. I just got it right more than often I got it wrong when to go. Um, yeah. Because you got to go if you're going to grow. You've got to you've got to employ staff. So it's, yeah. it's just when when to make the right call. Um, have I got better at it over time? Probably. So I've pro- probably just got better at knowing when to pull the string uh, based on what I think's coming. But it really is a, a bit of a gamble, to be honest. So, you know, yeah, and it, and it is probably you know, maybe one to two might be hardest, but then two to three, three to four, four to five, forty nine to fifty. There's it, it, still you're taking on another salary. It yeah. might be a whole lot easier to absorb when you've got 49 other people operating a business. You've obviously got a reasonable scale there Yeah, that if you do get the timing wrong, it might be easier to absorb for a little while. Hurt a yeah. little bit more when you go from one to two, but it's yeah, still the same decision to make the whole way through, isn't it? It is. It is. And, and probably the most challenging one was the offshore business because I wasn't there physically on the ground a lot. And so we went, we hired three and then went back to one. And then we, you know, went two, three, four, back to – yeah, so it was just such an up and down process. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so we yeah. ended up in there. You feel like you got the balance right for the moment? Yes. Yeah, look, I, I, look I, we're probably fortunate now we're in a position where you've got that economies of scale and you've got the structure and you know, the right managers on the ground in the right spot. So it has made it easier once you get past that mark of 20 to 30 um, because you've got that structure. So if you drop a couple – which you'd ever want to do, but it can happen. You can absorb easier and things like that. So that that's probably where it's gone yeah. a little bit easier. It sounds like there's just a couple of couple of positions for your Australian team that you're looking to fill different roles there. Yeah. You mentioned something when we were talking before about your professional year and so forth, something you called the your, your advisor academy. What what's that all about? Yeah, so we've launched it as Lead Wealth Advisor Academy, effectively to bring in new, new, new recruits that want to be advisors. Um and it's a program that's it's fully built online. Uh, we run it; it's, like, it's got its own training portals, and it's designed to run alongside the licensee uh, PY program. Uh, they can start it; it's the link side, the link advisor academy. They can start it whenever they want. Two years out from doing PY doesn't really matter. And it's an online system that they go in and do sort of regular training programs that we design at Link, and also where we capture all that client meetings so they can get recordings of. You know, directors doing meetings and things like that to get up to speed with how to do it. And then we do online training sessions with them through those portals. So it's sort of like a systemized and uh, process we've taken through alongside the, the PY program. And it's run by Faye Kong, one of my uh, senior guys, and he controls the, the associates and makes sure they're all up to speed. And yeah, it's been good. And we started about five years ago now. Five years, yeah, right. Yeah, it was, we, we saw the Royal Commission come and we knew we were going to have an issue. With trying to get advisors, um, so we, we 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 decided to really step it up then to get something going, and then and I'm I'm sort of glad we did because we, it's really now we're we're struggling to find probably the ARs we we, we need, and so this is really the the wave that's going to come through over the next couple of years is probably going to come through that. You know. So so that so that's then more of a you're kind of training them in house, you're building them in house rather than trying to hire someone that's already an AR from somewhere else. You're Hiring someone in at a, at a more junior level, they're working through whatever their career path is, but start on your uh, your advisor academy and and train them internally instead. Correct. Yeah. 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 So we just give, they're trained on sort of our way, you know, processes and procedures, and uh, we're finding that's that's a good uh, span. Yeah. Very good. So for is, us that, is that like video tools of you present? You know, whether it's you or someone else. That's like someone is it someone's recorded? You mentioned client meetings. So so is it is it like you? 
in a room explaining something, some doing some type of training, or is it actually recordings of client meetings where you've explained some particular topic and people can watch and learn and, yeah. and absorb it that way? Yeah, both. So, uh, yeah. you know, due, due to COVID, obviously everything moved online and, and so that really captured a lot of our online meetings. We, we record pretty much every single meeting that the advisors do and so that will we'll select different different meetings based on the, you know, the type of advice the advisor is giving and say that under the, if it's SMSF advice, it's ended up being with a fact find, something like that. So, we'll say that in the SMSF section. Yep. Um, and then we'll also do online training. So, I, sometimes I sit here in Adelaide and I train the guys back in Melbourne and I'll talk about a particular topic. And then we save that on, on the system so they can go at any time and or any advisor for that matter, whether they go through the PY or not, can go in there and just have a look at, you know, different topics and things like that and uh, go from there. Yeah, right. And, and so what 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 technology is always just to see what, how people are dealing with the recording of the client meetings? What what technology are you using for that? And, and, and then also the kind of the follow up is do you then make those recordings available to the clients to to review afterwards or had what's that yeah. process like for you? Yeah, so we use Teams and everything saved on Microsoft, Microsoft SharePoint, and uh, all the systems set up through Microsoft. Uh, we share pretty much that we've got a bit of a sales system, if you want to call it, that was designed a couple of years ago that comes off the back of our social media stuff. And uh, we share every single meeting with the client. Uh, so we, we, we do a 15 minute chat to start, then a, a, a one hour discovery session with them. And uh, yeah, we send that all to them. So it's saved on our internal stuff as well as sent to um, the client. And yeah, it's pretty much all Teams. Every now and then we use Zoom. Um, I haven't used this one before that we're on today. Oh, but this is more just for podcast. Oh, is it? Uh, right. Okay. Uh, rather than you wouldn't use it with clients, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, but no, it's, it's fairly simple. To be honest, it's not over complicated. We, we definitely just try to keep it very simple yeah, yeah. and straightforward and yeah. everyone can just log in and the, the, it's uh, you know to the portal that's internal and um, yeah, pick and choose what they want to go through. Yeah. And I'd, I'd imagine your licensee is fairly supportive of the Advisor Academy. Surely they think that's a good idea that you're doing something, some structured training like that? It is. It is. Uh, yeah, no, they're, they're all for it. We're trying to actually um, commoditize it for others as well to use at some stage in the future. So we, we may look at doing that. But yeah, they're, they're very supportive of the yeah. the program. It's, it's been good. We actually just recruited one this week, a uh, police officer, 44 years of age, coming to join us. And, yeah, um, right. Yeah, so, uh, so that'll be quite quite good so lots career of life change. career change yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah good we've had we've had some 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 good success with some uh, what you might consider older people coming in you know they've bounced around a few different careers and, and things in their yeah in their 20s and 30s and then uh yeah found it found their feet in financial advice and it's worked well for us too great yeah yeah, yeah nice so who who is a typical link wealth client like who, who are you or or are you pretty broad as like are you really narrow with who you're working with or is it really broad Pretty broad, Jace, yeah. to be honest, mate. Like we don't we don't tend to pigeonhole too much. Um, yeah, we go through a process when when people engage to just make sure they're on the the right track for advice and the right time that they're, they're ready for it. Uh, but yeah, we, I suppose in the generic terms, you know that that middle market, uh, mass market, you know, semi professional to professional mums and dads, to be honest, in, in yeah. the accumulator space, we deal with other ends of the spectrum as well. But definitely, we we can provide advice to the yep. Australian market. Really, is we. We don't tend to have that target client, um, yeah. and and even in our marketing, we don't tend to do it that way either. To be honest, so yeah, yeah. So, so, so let's talk about your your marketing. So for anyone advisors or anyone that might be listening, that that is it on TikTok. You, oh, if you're not on TikTok, you might not have seen. But a couple of your guys there, Josh and and, and Billy, uh, are fairly active there on on TikTok, and, and both amassed some some really decent followings there. I guess that that's one channel that I know of in terms of your, your marketing exercises. What, what else? We'll we'll talk in a bit more detail about TikTok in a second. But but what else are you doing from a marketing perspective to to build the business? Yeah, so I suppose our marketing strategy it's it's all in. So yeah. it comes from the top down. If if I'm doing it and Josh is doing it, we're all on the same journey. So we've we've got a philosophy at Link. It really is that it's all of us are going to join the party and and get involved um, yeah. and share the ideas between us. So that's our starting point. Uh, and then we just use, like yourself, it's just content. We, yeah, we just try to get the name out there, tell people what we do. I think it's still a challenge to get people to understand what advisors do. And we see this is a good way for people to understand what advisors do for a job. And I think that's just half the battle, <laughs> really, you know. Because once they realize what you do, well, they go, oh, I can't need and I've got the need. And they put the two together, right? So that's all we try to, that's all we're trying to do with it. And, and also have a bit of fun with it. We're, um, we, the guys are really enjoying it and they've done it for a couple of years and, uh, yeah, it's different, which is good. 
Yep. Um, so look, we're on WeChat. So Fei Kong, he, oh, yeah. he, he does the WeChat side of things, and yeah. he's very much good on the Chinese community side of the fence. Yep. Uh, we're obviously on Instagram, LinkedIn's quite quite heavy, so I do probably more of the LinkedIn stuff, and then um, and obviously TikTok and, and Facebook as well. So we sort of use all of them. If yeah, you nice. like, uh, we don't, and and then we, and I think the key is for us is probably connecting that to a decent website. So we've, you know, it's all sort of connected up with the you know, Cowley links all that to automate where we can type of stuff. But, sure. um, but yeah, it's it's all sort of connected up. And I think there's probably circa ninety to ninety five thousand people across all the platforms connected yeah. in some way, shape, or form. Follow, yeah, the, following along in some way, shape, or form. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's not what too is, bad. I've never spent any time looking at WeChat. What does that? Is there like a feed kind of thing on WeChat like there is on Instagram and these other places or it's very similar to the Facebook type of arrangements. Okay. Um and you do a lot of like, Fade does a live a lot of live pod it's more live type of stuff on there. So he's uh he's on there doing a lot of that type of stuff. It's it's more live rather than the the that's the um quick video type of stuff. So yeah, he gets good success out of that one. Yeah, yeah. nice. Good on you. And and so um what are the like it is if if you think of where are most of the inquiries coming from? Is it coming from TikTok or Instagram or like what, what's what's working for you at the moment? Yeah, um, funnily enough, it's a real mixed bag. LinkedIn, yeah. uh, it goes in waves. We find like sometimes we're LinkedIn, sometimes Josh, Josh, Josh and Billy do very well. On, uh, they get a lot of um, contact on TikTok. Yeah. But then, funnily enough, lately, the last six months, it's been Google. Uh, yeah, I don't know why or how. It's just people have been finding us on Google that we don't really advertise on Google or do. And I'm not sure if it's just through the internet world of how that all connects up, and yeah, yeah, I don't know um, how it's mm. working. But people are just getting us off Google, and we're asking them, and they say, "Yeah, I've got you off Google." And what's I don't really <laughs> know where that's coming from. So, but we're we're just okay. That's that's cool. So yeah, we'll so it. we uh, we get a bit. So you know, same thing. You ask clients, we did. How did you come come across us? And and there's a there's a fair bit of it that I think is like. Um, Scam, like like not scam, but but trying to check that the online presences on Instagram and particularly TikTok that it's not a scam. Yeah, gotcha. So, so we find people uh, either googling my name or First Financial or, or something like that. They may well have seen some of our content on one of these other places, True. but then they just go back to Google, find your website. Hey, it looks like a legitimate website. You know, this I've, I've seen Steve's videos, and now I can see Steve's on this website. It all kind of marries up and then make an inquiry through the website rather than rather than through these uh, these other ones because um yeah. there's lots of fake accounts out there lots of scam accounts oh uh, god i tell you like it's a it's a nightmare and I, I wish there was a solution to it uh that's for sure uh, yeah 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 because yeah. you get them i get them all the time on tiktok people saying oh there's a fake one and this one's messaging me about stuff I'm like, oh, it's just oh yeah we had unfortunately we had one got caught up in a, a client and it, yeah, it's not good yeah. Uh, yeah, it's really really disappointing. But yeah, got to just try and keep working at it to educate, I suppose. Yeah, do what we can. Yep. So you you, you seem really supportive of of the team. Like you, you you spoke, but it's kind of where it's all, you know, all one in all in. You seem really supportive of the rest of the team, just trying these different things out. And if someone has a bit of success some somewhere, then then you will tend to gravitate towards it. Yeah. Yeah. So look, I, you know. I've got a, you know, I, I do this job for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, obviously, to provide, you know, um, I, I enjoy financial advice and financial services in general, uh, and I enjoy, you know, the client side, but I personally grew up, you know, in a lower socioeconomic family, so I wanted to provide a different life for my family, but I truly, half the time, is really the passion to generating the, the career development for my team, to be yeah. honest. I, I thoroughly enjoy it. I've driven by it. I want to give them every success they want to earn towards and work towards. And um, and I, I, that's why it's so so important to me that we're on the journey together. Um, it, it's probably one of my top ones or twos, really. Yeah. So so, what, so what's next? What's the business plan for the Leak Wealth? Where, what are you taking over the east coast of Australia by the sounds of those different <laughs> different offices you've got? What, plans? Uh, yeah, look, I um, I, I feel like we're, we're, we're really enjoying it. Like we're and as a team, I, and I'm really enjoying. It. I think I think you probably witnessed this yourself, James. You know, financial advice been through a pretty hard time. Yeah. You know, and, and I think yeah, you know, we can totally breathe and do our job of just look after clients and and without the real big headwinds that we've had to deal with. So I'm I'm sort of really enjoying it now. Um, five years ago when the Royal Commission was happening, and I'm actually licensed by MP, so it was that was interesting. Um, 
yeah, it wasn't as enjoyable, uh, but we're sort of on that journey now. So we're starting to enjoy it. Um, where to from here? We've got we've got a really good business consultant working with uh, Baz Gardner at the minute. We're doing a lot of work with him. Oh, and yeah, so yeah, we're, yeah. We're, we're going no, to Baz, yeah. No, Baz, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so we're, we're sort of looking at what our, what our options are. We really want to cement ourselves in, you know, in the Melbourne, Adelaide in particular because I live here half the week um, and, and keep on going to Sydney and Brisbane where we can. Yeah. Um, and just go from there, really, and 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 just sort of see where where we go. We've got some pretty big plans. We look up to 20, 40 families today. We're trying to get to two thousand, yeah, in, in three years' time. So that's that's what I've signed up to as the MD, and so we've got a, a you know, bit of a journey to get there. But and it's really connecting the dots. You know, we've got a tech piece has to come into that, major account piece has to come into that, the staff piece has to come into that, and you know, get everything else lined up. So we're we're working towards that. Yeah, as we I was going to say, what is it? So you so you're five hundred odd at the moment with five ARs. What what does d- does two does two thousand then mean? You need twenty. Is that my maths right? Like yeah. what what do, you, what do you think the headcount needs to look like? Look, it's probably um, at least another half of what I've got now. Um, with the, the, I'm fortunate, probably this team offshore this is really our engine room for the growth, and it has been, and that's probably got us to where we are today. To be honest, that the team I have in the Philippines has been amazing, and yeah, you know, that that will allow me to scale it up to get to that that level. Really, we're trying to get the AR numbers for looking after families. So a family unit we classify as one client. We're trying to get them to look after about 150 to 180 family units. We've got to, got to have the tech to support that. Clearly. Yeah, for sure. we, we just we just can't do it without it. So that's that's sort of what I'm trying to get to from an AR number perspective. I probably need another four ARs to get to that that sort of level. I think with the right tech. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's it. You're going to need to because you know there's often this this kid's spoken about this number of iron advisor tends to cap out at about a hundred clients. They're too busy seeing their clients. That that kind of thing. If you're if you're going to want to be sitting at 150 to 180, yeah, this you're going to need. That there's technology supporting that. There's going to be people needed to support that, but also technology yeah. as well. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. So we're having some really good conversations at the minute with our licensees. It looks like the SOA side of the docks are coming down in size, which is nice. Beautiful. Yeah. Uh, but the tech piece we're constantly looking at. So yeah. AI is probably going to come into it at some stage. Mm. But um, so yeah, we. Um, so have you got any secrets that you can tell me on tech? <laughs> nah, look, it's we. So much like you, kind of Callum, like we're just just trying to speed up that whole. Process the the bit that the bit that we really need to work on is the data capture from the clients. That's the biggest roadblock for our process right now. Like it's the fifteen minute phone call template for you know, booking and follow up meetings, and we need this information, we need that information. But then we get all of this stuff from the client, and we don't we use Xplan. Yeah, and 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 that kind of front end data capture tool on Xplan is pretty atrocious for yeah for clients to to use. Yeah, and there's other plugins and so forth that we're looking at at the moment. So that's that's a roadblock for us is to try and try and push some of that data capture back into the client rather than to us. Like they're gathering it up anyway instead of plugging it in. Yep. And yep. then we're uh, doing the video SOA stuff. So I've done a done four or five of the video SOAs, which is a uh, how's it's, that gone? It's not so. It's a much more interactive experience for the client. For sure. Yeah, and it saves our back office power planning team hours, hours and hours in 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 writing the SOA. So the the biggest saving is in our, is in our power planning team. Everything else before and after is broadly the same. The meeting's better with the client, but yeah. So that's that's the other area that's where great. we're so trying to speed things up. The the, the the client must really enjoy that compared to going through a well, massive. So, so I've done a couple, and everyone's like, "Oh, how did the client take it?" I said, "Well, I'm talking to brand new clients that have never received advice before, so they." Yeah, they don't right. know it any different. They they were somewhat probably somewhat puzzled when I put this sixty page document in front of them, and they're saying, "Hang on, can't you just tell me what I need to do?" <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. So the and the, the Adelaide office that's a, that's an interesting. So you know, a lot of financial planning businesses, particularly if they're in Melbourne and Sydney and so forth, they'll kind of have offices dotted up and down the east coast. Yeah, it's not that many that go over to Adelaide or even over to to, to WA. What's was that client driven? Did you have some clients around there? What's What's he was family, family driven, mate. Family, yeah, uh, yeah, right. yeah, about five years ago, we, we unfortunately had a bit of a health in the family mm-hmm. issue, yeah. and so we decided to re- re- relocate the family. We we're going back and forth a lot between uh, Melbourne and Adelaide, and um, and then I just sort of said to my wife, I said, "Look, you know, we had a young child at the time. Harvey was one, I think. Yeah. So I said, look, how about we just park in Adelaide, and I'll do the travel rather than the whole family get <laughs> yeah. on the plane and go back and forth.' So. 
that's that's predominantly why we did it, and then we just sort of set up from there. So yeah, right. Also, oh, so like home for you is Adelaide. Yeah, not Melbourne. yeah, yeah. No, right, so you Adelaide. Yes, yeah. so I live in yeah. uh, Adelaide here, and then I go back and forth normally Tuesday to Thursday back in Melbourne. Yep. Uh, I try not to do every week now. I, I used to do every week for about four years, but now yeah. I sort of do every couple of weeks. I go back and and particularly definitely. now with the whole you know the, the all the video meetings like you're talking about before recording everything and. I'm sure clients are well and truly used to it. Yeah, uh, that it doesn't really matter so much if you're in Adelaide or if you're in Melbourne or if you're in Sydney or Brisbane. Doesn't doesn't no, matter too they much. No, and, and and staff as well. So, like yeah. I used to think, oh, I got to got to be there because the staff are going to need me there. Or it's just not like that. You yeah, know, it's they just they just. Um, I think they're totally even fine without me That's there. It. To be honest, with you. it just kind of reinforces that if if you hire good people and trust them to do the job that you've employed them to do, sh- sure. You'll soon work out if they're not doing it, but if you've hired the right people, they're going to get on with the job whether you're there or not. So. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. And like I've, 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 I've always hated that micromanagement philosophy. Anyway, it's never, never worked for me. I've never yeah. been coming to my vocabulary. So it, it, it's, it's completely fine. I've got a great team. So yeah, it's well. fantastic. All right. Well, thanks, Steve. Thanks for joining me. As I said at the start, I really appreciate you kind of reaching out uh, and uh, and offering to come on for a chat. Good to speak with you. Nice one. Um, it's a bit of value in there for anyone that's listening, and uh, thanks for joining me today. Right. Thanks, James. Appreciate it. Cheers, thanks, mate. Steve.